Good morning and welcome to Kindred Church. We're so glad to have you in worship with us today. Uh, For those of you that I may not have met before, my name is Daniel and I'm the pastor here. And if this is your first time to worship with us at Kindred, we are especially glad that you're with us. We want you to know that whatever your faith journey looks like, whatever your background is, you are welcome here. And we hope that this worship service will help you and all of us to take our next steps in response to the unconditional love of God. Uh, If you are new, we would love to connect with you, and one of the best ways to do that is if you'll go to our website, it's kindrednc.church. If you click connect, there's a form that we've got linked there, and if you fill that out for us, leave us some contact information. Uh, We'll be sure to follow up with you. We can answer any questions that you have and and just welcome you to our community, but we're glad that you're with us uh, today. Now, to engage with the the worship service today, you may want to see our order of worship and the lyrics to our songs. For those of you watching this on the Church Online platform, you'll find that information under the Notes tab there. And for the rest of you, if you're watching this on Facebook or Vimeo or YouTube, we've got all of this information linked to a PDF in the video description. Uh, Also, be sure to say hey in the comments or or in the chat. We love to hear from you. We love to know who's worshiping together with us. Um, And also, all of your engagement with this video helps more people to see it. So when you leave us a like, when you make a comment, when you share this video, it helps us to reach more people. And that's central to our mission at Kindred Church. So thanks for your help with that. Now, as we transition from whatever you were doing right before this into this time of worship, uh, I'd invite us all to just take a minute to take a deep breath and, and transition our hearts transition our our minds into this time. And and as we do that, uh, today is actually the the first Sunday in a Christian season that we call Advent. Advent is this time of of spiritual preparation when we're preparing our hearts to celebrate once again the good news of Christmas. And we have a tradition in the church where each week in the season of Advent leading up to Christmas, uh, we successively light one more candle on our Advent wreath as a way of of marking this time. So as it's the the first Sunday in Advent today, uh, we're lighting the candle of hope this morning as we remember and as we celebrate the hope that we have in Jesus. Uh, Once again, we're so glad that you're with us this morning, and we hope you enjoyed the service.
hands bind In one the hearts of all mankind Bid all our sad division cease And by yourself our King of Peace Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Now would you join me in our opening prayer. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning comes from Luke chapter 3. It says this, In the fifteenth year of the rule of the emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor over Judea and Herod was ruler over Galilee, his brother Philip was ruler over Eturia and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was ruler over Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, God's word came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. John went throughout the region of the Jordan River, calling for people to be baptized, to show that they were changing their hearts and lives, and to show that they wanted God to forgive their sins. This is just as it was written in the scroll of the words of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah had said, a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The crooked will be made straight and the rough places will be made smooth. All of humanity will see God's salvation. Then John said to the crowds who came to be baptized by him, you children of snakes, who warned you to escape from the angry judgment that is coming soon? Produce fruit that shows that you have changed your hearts and changed your lives. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let all mortal flesh keep silence And with fear and trembling stand Ponder nothing earthly minded For with blessing in his hand Christ our God to earth descended our full homage to
think the host of heaven spreads its vanguard on the way as the light of light descendeth from the realms of endless day. Good morning. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Manoka Yants. I'm one of the worship leaders here at Kindred Church. If you will, let us all join together in prayer. O oh Lord, as we keep watch this Advent for the light that is in each of us, may we commit to prepare and uncover all that steals light from us so we can see and understand fully your redeeming love for us. Amen. This week, we begin a new season of the church calendar. It's called Advent. It is a season when we both anticipate and receive God's love through the birth of Jesus at Christmas time. Advent is the ultimate example of the rhythm of the, Christ of the Christian story. Humanity messes up, i.e. sins, and God needs to come and forgive and provide salvation. In Advent, God grants us the ultimate sign of redemption, Jesus being born to redeem all creation. Jesus closes the gap between us and God when he comes and makes his appearance on earth. Advent is four weeks, and each week often has a focus. Week one is about resetting and preparation. We reflect on God's love, restart, and remind ourselves of our practices that help to both receive and share love. Preparing the way of the Lord does not have to be something that requires an additional to-do list, but more helps with freedom to seek God in this time of preparation. For me, yoga has reminded me of Advent. When I was in college, I started practicing yoga. Now hear me saying practicing, not doing. Oftentimes I would drag myself and all of my stuff to my college gym to do yoga each week. I'd have on my cute outfit and I would sometimes have to really motivate myself to go each week. I would be there and I would do what the instructor would ask of me, but sometimes I just wasn't feeling it. I might have been stressed, I might have not had time in my schedule, but each week in, week in and week out, I would lug myself there and do what I was asked of me, even if I didn't immediately feel that it was something I needed to be doing in the moment. Yoga helped me to choose being over doing, and I believe that's what Advent is asking of us as well. Yoga has taught me to continue to make this decision of being overdoing. Yoga is not about perfection, but about body and mind awareness. For me, as I noted, it didn't always make sense. I didn't get instant gratification from it, and sometimes I just was too busy to fit it into my schedule. But as in all things, it was a choice to stop and practice. Over time, it's a practice that has helped to calm my mind when I needed it most. And now when I find myself in a season of tension or stress, I often move towards yoga as a practice of care. Now, I imagine that God hopes that we will use the season of Advent as a time to cultivate practices that bring freedom to our lives freedom to feel God's love, and be prepared with go-to practices for the ups and downs of the life of faith. A relationship with God is in the nature of each of us, but we often have to make space to remember this. 
In week one of Advent, we are asked to begin our preparations for Jesus' birth. This is what John is doing in our scripture lesson from Luke today. John is preparing the way for God birthed in Jesus Christ. John has been commissioned to prepare the way not for the Lord Caesar or any earthly Lord, but for the one true Lord. Preparation for John didn't take money or fancy wrapping paper or the most beautifully set up social media post. It took time, energy, and courage to voice his faith in what was coming. It was an awareness or a hope that what was coming was better than what is right now. John challenges God's people to see the wilderness as a place not of desolation, but of hope. This voice from John doesn't come from a mountaintop or some shiny place, but from the wilderness a place that is often seen as dark and full of fear. Think about that for a second. The voice of eternal hope saying that creation's redemption was coming doesn't come from a place of bright and shininess, but rather from a place of deep, dark wilderness. We may not be able to voice something as prolific as John did in our preparation, but we can't start or renew practices that bring awareness of hope closer to us. Think of it as shouting Jesus is coming to ourselves, just as John did to the townspeople. Another John, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, helped his people in the early Methodist movement see these Advent practices or means of grace in two categories works of piety and works of mercy. Works of piety are often practices that help grow our individual faith as human beings, while works of mercy often are practices that help translate God's love through service to those around us. The goal is not to necessarily accomplish a task, but just as my yoga journey we aim to continue a practice that opens ourselves for God to be close. When we participate in the means of grace, Advent becomes seen, seen to us and seen to those around us. Advent becomes not just another list to check off, but a way of being in the Christian life. We can't do anything more to make God love us any more than God does right now. But I really believe that when our soul grows through practices like we've been talking about today, and we become more Christ-like, I suspect that God is pleased. Now, I hate to tell you, but Jesus is coming whether we are ready or not. And I know that I would prefer to be prepared with space in my mind and heart to feel love and grace that Christ desires for us at Christmas time. I want my preparation, and I hope that you want that too. As the year ends, we look back to the past for a reflection and comfort. But as followers of Christ, we also look forward to the coming of the one greater than us all. So let us take time to get ready. This week and this Advent, let's journey together in starting or maybe restarting a means of grace. That could be journaling, participating in service to others, or even prayer. My hope for each of us is that this week we can take some time for preparation, even if it's a short amount of time. Preparation that helps us become more alive to what is coming in a few short weeks. Because perhaps part of being alive, being awake, is being in touch with a deep sense of how much we need God's love in our lives. Preparing the Lord's path towards peace requires overturning all that is the earth and all that is around us. In Luke, John quotes the prophet Isaiah to describe the earth-shaking transformation that must take place. So I say, bring on the Advent bulldozers, in our lives, in our church, and in our world. 
Let's move away all that blocks us from knowing God's love so that as Luke tells us, all humanity will see God's salvation. Amen. Thank you, Minoka, for that good word for us this morning. Uh, well, friends, one of the ways that we respond to God's love that's already in all of our lives is that we practice financial generosity. And there are several ways that you can give to support the ministries of Kindred Church. Uh, you can text Kindred NC to the number that you see here on your screen. You can go to our website, which is kindrednc.church, or you can scan the QR code that you see on your screen here with your phone camera, and that'll give you a, a link that sends you to our give page. Uh, however you choose to give, we thank you so much for your support of our church and our ministries, and thank you for joining with us in the practice of financial generosity. a virus hate is cheap from afar it costs you nothing sister take my hand brother we will stand open up your heart and find love is turning over tables breaking off chains when i see you in the stranger i'm no longer the
Amen. Thank you, Kindred Band, as always. Thank you, Minoka, for preaching for us today. Uh, Friends, just a a few announcements for you before we go here. Uh, The first is that our next in-person worship service is going to be next Sunday, that's December the 5th, at 10 a.m. at the AMC Classic Theater in Durham. Uh, We look forward to to seeing you there if you're in our area. I also want to keep on your radar that our Christmas Eve service is coming up. That's going to be on Christmas Eve, December 24th at 5 p.m. at the AMC. AMC Classic Theater in Durham. Uh, This is a great time to invite friends, family members, neighbors who don't already have a a church home, a church community in their life. Uh, Christmas Eve is always a a fun celebration and we're planning this service with visitors in mind. So it's a a great time to bring somebody new. I hope you'll be thinking and praying about who you could invite. I also want to keep on your radar that we're going to be launching our weekly worship services at the AMC Classic Theater on January 9th, Sunday, January 9th at 10 a.m. It's going to be an awesome launch celebration. We'll have a launch party after worship. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, That's also the perfect time to invite somebody new to come with you to to check out Kindred Church. We're hoping to to launch strong and we're hoping we'll have a lot of visitors with us that day who we can give a a taste of of this Kindred community and hopefully they'll want to come back and and stay involved with our church and and all that we're doing. Um, So again, I, I hope you'll be thinking and praying about who you can invite. Uh, well, we have a lots of other things going on this, this Advent season, more than I have time to tell you about here. So I hope that you will subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. That'll keep you up to date on all that we're doing. It'll get you information, links, everything that you need to stay up to speed. Uh, also, you can check out the link under announcements in the video description below, and that'll get you up to speed as well. Well, with that, friends, we are sent. We are sent back into our lives, back into the world, and we're sent in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember that we love you. We hope you have a great week, and may the peace of Christ be.